Hello everyone. When you go through problems, and I believe we all go through problems. So when you go through problems, don't become overwhelmed by them. I think with some people, they may contemplate so much on their problems to where they may feel overwhelmed and begin acting in a very bad way. Now, if we are going to reap what we sow, if what I do in some way or whatever will return to me, how do I benefit by doing wrong? Not saying that we are going to do everything perfectly. When you go through problems, handle everything, as I say it, one problem at a time. For myself, I am going through some things and I am involved with some other people's problems as well. So I have my own problems and I am involved with maybe two or more other people's, maybe one other person, I would say, maybe two. And what you should do, you may not know what to do. You may think to yourself, what can I do to calm myself down? What can I do to feel better? What I usually do, and especially now, I try to keep my mind on things of God. I try to listen to teachings, maybe the audio Bible, like have my mind very, I guess I can say, hardcore on the things of God. Because if I contemplate on my problems day in and day out, how do you believe I am going to feel? Like I believe I will begin to feel depressed, sad, angry, hateful, spiteful, or whatever else. So, my mind is pretty much on scriptures. Like, I am praying. I pray, I mean. I may even fast. And some people may wonder, how long can you fast for? Hey, you can fast for two weeks, a month, two months. You can fast for three days, a day, hours, five hours, six hours, 18 hours. I don't think there is a time limit on fasting, right? You may be going through so many problems. They may feel overwhelming, but can't you take your mind off of it? For instance, something came to my mind, and I believe a demon was trying to get me into fear. It is something I am not worried about it, but it is something I would say is important to me. But if I don't have power to do 
anything about it as in do this or do that. Why worry about it? Can't I pray? So I can't do anything about it but pray and I guess fast. Let me do what I can and not worry about the rest. I am going through a situation now. And I believe it is unfair. Why worry about it? Huh? Why should I stress myself out on something I can basically, I would say, fast and pray about? Yes, I could do something else, but basically, I guess I can say like the main things or the most effective things right now is to pray and or fast about it. Why should I stay up all night worrying, wondering what is going on and what is going to happen and I am being or I feel I am being treated unfairly? Why even lose sleep on stuff like that? Yes, you may cry. Yes, you may be sad. But what? Don't stay that way, right? I have problems. <laughs> Surely, I think you may have problems as well, too. But I don't think it's about having problems, but it's how you react to them, right? If you are always reacting negatively toward your problems, cussing folks out, yelling at people, acting really wild and aggressive, hey, what is that telling you about yourself? Perhaps you are spiritually immature, right? I don't want to be that way. Let me read the Bible and act upon what I know and stop going back and forth. Back in my past, I was lukewarm. I would constantly try to live for God, then go back into sin. Try to live for God and go back to sin. Try to like this back and forth type of stuff. And it came a time, I forget how everything was, but I was probably constantly asking Jesus Christ for help. And there was a day to where, not really a voice, but like a stream, I would say for like a week straight, like a stream of thoughts, as if there was like a consciousness or whatever, like streaming thoughts into my mind, telling me that I should do this and don't watch this, stay away from that and stuff like that. I am serious now. And what I do now, and I believe back around that time too, listen now, you have to chase after God. Like, why do you believe if you believe this way? You can watch horror movies. You can watch videos about men and women halfway dressed. You can listen to rap music like Lil Wayne and I don't really know the new rappers of this day. Lil Yachi, <laughs> Lil Yachi, <laughs> whatever his name is. How can you look at and listen to all this mess and do your little prayer maybe pray to Jesus for five seconds every other night or one minute, maybe not even one minute. How do you believe you can effectively live for Jesus Christ if you live in that type of life? You need to actively 
Chase after Jesus Christ. Read your Bible. Pray fast. Actively, the more you do it, I believe the better it is going to be for you. For myself, I think I have, there is a person I read the Bible with. And there were some things I knew, but I believe we both learned so much from reading the Bible. Back in the past, I would pretty much mainly, which I kind of do now, listen to teachings, but me and that other person read the Bible together. And so much information. And also, I think if you read the Bible, you may see why certain things have went wrong in your life. I am telling you, take what you read from the Bible and try to apply it in your life. Like, what do you do almost every day? I think many people... They like to work out, like lift weights and, and, and jog and do all that stuff there. The enthusiasm that you have for working out or playing tennis or whatever you like playing, playing video games and stuff like that, that same enthusiasm that you have for whatever you really like doing, have that enthusiasm, or whatever you may call it, for learning about Jesus Christ. Trying to live for Jesus Christ is not a side venture. It's not a side hobby. It's not like, uh, you know, when you sprinkle some salt, if you sprinkle, I don't sprinkle salt, well, I eat salt. If someone cooks with salt, I would eat it. But it's not like sprinkling salt on your food like a side thing. No. Living for Jesus Christ is the main course. So that should... Listen now. You should place much time in trying to learn about Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how long you have been in church. It doesn't matter how long you have read the Bible. Like, from my understanding, we need to constantly refresh ourselves. So even if you say you have read the Bible 10 times, 20 times, 100 times, do you know everything can you comprehend everything that is in the Bible? Probably not, right? So if you don't, you aren't done reading the Bible. And even if you could comprehend everything of the Bible, I believe we need to constantly refresh ourselves. When I read with my reading partner, I tell that person, look, or I would tell that person something like, we are not in a rush. Let's not read really fast. Let's not just read for the sake of reading. Let's read to understand. What is the point in being able to read a chapter a day or a whole book in the Bible a day if we have little understanding in it? So let's slow down. Let's look up words. Let's chew on it. Do you know what I mean? Like if you are chewing on a steak, do you chew one time and swallow? I hope not. <laughs> Depending on how big it is, I guess. I believe if you chew on a steak, if you like meat, I think you will have to chew on it, chew on it, chew on it, then swallow, right? So before... And probably still now, I tell that person something like, look, stop rushing. We are not in a rush. Let's take our time, look up words, whatever else. Sometimes we may not look up every time. You know, let's 
read to understand other than read to just say, hey, I read three chapters in one day. Okay, tell me what you have learned. And you probably wouldn't able to be able to tell me much. So I believe I was telling my reading partner that stuff in so many words. So read to understand. Because look, I want to, I think in this life, you may agree or disagree. Ooh, I believe in this life, I think this life is a test. So whatever is in the Bible, pretty much, to a certain degree, I guess, in a way or in a sense, aren't we going to be tested upon those things? If so, why not focus on that? Like, when you die, or if you die, let's say when you die, can you take your Mercedes? Can you take your Rolex, your Rolex, your plasma or LCD, LED TV? Can you take your laptop, your iPhone, your Samsung Galaxy? Can you take tangible stuff like that to heaven or hell? To the next realm? I don't think so. If you can, I have... You might be able to, but maybe not. If you can't, why focus so much of those things? What can you bring with you when you die? I believe how you performed, so your report, I guess I can say, your record, huh? Of how you were on this earth. So if that be the case, why not focus on that? If what I am doing now, as in my record, my report upon how I am doing on this earth, is what I can bring with me to the next realm, why not focus more on that than my earthly life, if that makes any sense? I think on this earth, some people see success as having a large house and having uh, a nice car and having a pretty wife and a muscular, you know, husband and stuff like that. And having like this carnal image of how, I guess, some people believe life should be. But does those things even matter? If your earthly pursuits is getting in the way of your spiritual life, you need to let them go, right? You need to let them go or put them way behind Jesus Christ, right? If you work in 12, 15 hours a day to where you don't have time to pray, you don't have time to read your Bible. You don't have time to really do anything with God. You need to throw away that job, right? Kevin, I am making so much money. You know, back when I was a child, I was so poor. I did not really have anything. So with this job now, I can really get so much things on this earth. And I am so happy about it. But you are going to have to die, right? Aren't you going to die? So if you die, where are those things going? I believe they are going to stay on this earth. So aren't we going to be judged based upon how we perform on this earth? So while you are working for those carnal, tangible things, aren't you sacrificing your spiritual life? So you're willing to pretty much 
take yourself to hell for some iPhones and a Bugatti, a Mercedes, or a Rolex and stuff like that? Come on now. Let me stop here.